The mind is a lot faster than the body. Right now you can think about Moscow. The mind has already gone there. But for the body to go there would take a long time. You can think about the southern end of South America, and you've gone there already. The mind is gone. So a lot of the meditation is about training this very quick part of your awareness, of your experience, and trying to get it to stay in place. The quality in Pali is called alertness. Your body sitting right here. You want to be with the sensation of the body sitting right here. When you're walking, you want to be with the sensation of each step as it's happening. So how do you nail it down? We talked last night about full body awareness. We talked about it again this morning. And it's a really important part of getting the mind to be really solid in the present moment and to stay here. Because the mind, when it goes off to think about something else, can get very small and then it zips off. Whereas if you keep your range of awareness large, you're more likely to stay here. And the reason we want to stay here, of course, is because we want to see what's going on in the mind. Because your mind is shaping things all the time. There's a major misconception about the Buddhist teachings on karma, that they say that what you're experiencing right now is totally shaped by the past. It's actually a teaching that he repudiated in very strong terms. As he once said, if everything you're experiencing right now is shaped by actions in the past, then if you're killing right now, it's because of actions in the past. If you're stealing right now, it's because of actions in the past. It makes your awareness in the present moment totally irresponsible. But as he said, it also leaves you unprotected and bewildered, because your only defense against suffering in the present moment is your ability to act in the present moment, your ability to shape things in the present moment. If you deny yourself that ability, you're lost. But the fact is that we do shape things. Just the fact that you see a sight and you can interpret it as a blur of color, and you recognize oh, that's, that's Orion, the cat, that blur of gray. You pick the color out of its background, and you give it an identity. You identify it as an object in three-dimensional space, and that requires a lot of activity in the course of the mind, and that's just seeing. With hearing, we recognize sounds. You're talking to somebody, a lot of interpretation goes on top of that, what the person's intention is, where you want to direct the conversation. There's a lot of activity going on right now. And more than anything else, it's your activity in the present moment that's going to determine whether you're going to suffer right now or whether you're not going to suffer. So rather than leaving you unprotected, the Buddha actually provides you with guidance, because that's the other part of being protected, is having a clear sense of what kind of action is skillful and what kind is not. Some of that you can learn from reading the teachings, listening to the Dharma talks. But ultimately it comes down to having to see it while it's happening, as the Buddha says, as things have come to be. When greed has come to be in your mind, you want to be able to see it. And the more quickly you can catch it, the easier it's going to be to deal with it. If you wait until it's been allowed to sprout and spread its branches and spread its roots, it's going to be, take a long time to get it out. So this is why we want to stay in the present moment, because these things come very quickly. And usually it's in the moments when we're not fully alert that these things can get started. So try to spread your awareness. Have a sense of well-being right here. If there are parts of the body that you're afraid to inhabit, well, 
stay with the ones in the beginning that you feel comfortable with, that you feel secure with, and then test the waters. It's like seeing a lake and wanting to decide whether it's worth jumping in or not. Well, you stick your toe in. Get a sense of whether the water is too warm, too cold. Usually it's too cold. But if it's just right, then you can jump right in. If you find that it's a little cold, step back a bit and ask yourself, why do I feel insecure in that part of the body? Try inhabiting it for a bit and see what feelings come up. And ask yourself, do you want to side with those feelings? Do you want to identify with those feelings? Or just notice them as something separate? It's when you can see these things as separate, that's when you're more alert to what's going on. And you're in a better position to do something about them. To so do what you can to be on top of each breath. Do what you can to be on top of each tendency of the mind to leave the breath. We're trying to be here not because the present moment is a wonderful moment, but because it's an important moment. All the things you need to know in order to gain awakening are right here. They're happening right here. The things you need to understand, the things you need to comprehend, the things you need to develop, the things you need to let go. All the things covered by the Four Noble Truths are right here. And once you can recognize them, then you have a guide as to what to do. If there's any stress in the mind, you want to comprehend it. If there are any good qualities like concentration and mindfulness, you want to develop them. So you can see, well, what's causing the stress? What mental activity is causing the stress? That's what you want to let go of. All too often we see that there's stress or pain, we try to let go of that. It's like having a fire and smoke filling your house and deciding that you want to put out the smoke. You can't put out the smoke until you put out the fire. And the more time you spend putting out the smoke, the more the fire gets to burn. So again, we're alert to the present moment, not as an end in and of itself but as a means to understanding what the mind is doing right now that's causing suffering and how you can stop it. After all, that's what the Buddha said. His teachings were about suffering and the end of suffering. And it's right here that you can see those teachings, act on them, get the results that the Buddha wanted you to get from them. Try to be alert, try to be alive to what's going on right now. A lot of the things the mind is doing are so habitual that they've just faded into the background. And what we're trying to do is to stay here steadily enough so we can bring them out of the background and see them clearly once more and figure out what we can change about how we relate to the present moment. It's all right here. It's just a matter of staying here steadily with the right framework in mind. That's what makes a difference. <laughs>